All right, so we're going to cover a topic here that seems to be a lot of debate and it related to storage planning. So we have a free NAS server here, 11.2 RC1, running an older AMD Opteron 6172 12 core processor. Now we're going to do iSCSI versus NFS, and I know there's better machines out there. There's enterprise machines. Tom, did you test on this machine? I wish I had time. Maybe if someone throws enough money at me, I will test it on more machines. Or if they throw machines at me and money, so I have all of it together, more than happy to do it. My important part about this test is, for consistency, we're going to be testing it on exactly this system. So the NFS on this system and the iSCSI on this system. So we have at least based on the same pieces of hardware, and it should scale if you have better hardware, the performance results should scale upwards for both devices, um, or both different formats, I mean, of NFS or iSCSI for how you want to present to the storage to a hypervisor. And you should be able to kind of extrapolate some results. A couple things we want to cover here is all the details. This has uh, 20 gigs of RAM in it. It's running the release candidate, which I found very stable. I know the new build comes out in only a few weeks, but I decided to run it with this one. I've tested it with the 11.1 that we have, and I'm, my results overall are the same. Generally speaking, I because he's faster, but we'll get into the details shortly here. So let's talk about first, how are the disks set up? Because that's an important aspect of this. NFS benefits greatly from having a ZIL drive. So we go over here and we have the SCSI and the NFS. The SCSI is a ZVAL block storage data set, so standard files. We're going to look at the status. It's just a RAID Z with three Western Digital um, black one terabytes. That's what I had handy. We had three of them. I actually had four. One was bad. Um, these are some used drives, but they all tested good except for the one that's not in here no more. Uh, then we have our ZIL here, which is an SSD. No, it's not an Intel Optane or anything amazing. It's just a... Uh, standard SanDisk SSD I had laying around. Uh, so that's on there for the Zill. So if you're not familiar with how Zill works, there's a great write-up that I'll leave a link to on the FreeNAS page um, below that has an explanation of how Zill works with CFS. It's really interesting. It's not exactly a write cache like people would call it. It's the intention log cache. And it does help a lot, especially with ZFS. We're going to show some of that in the testing. So now that you kind of get an idea there, we're going to look at the services we have running. Now I have it set up with NFS. There was 12 cores to this machine, so we have 12 cores, 12 servers set up with NFS. What that is, is it's allowed to spawn 12 of them. We're using uh, NSF v4 is terms is the mount on here. Um, I didn't really see any test speed differences. There's, apparently there's some minor deviation between NS, NFS v4 and NFS uh, v3. Back to services for the iSCSI, it's pretty much default all the way across. There's no passwords on it. It's just basically set up pretty simple. Um, one extent, the only checkbox out of default would be the fact that this is a Zen Initiator compatibility mode has been checked. Other than that, everything else is just the defaults on this. And let's talk about network connectivity and interfaces. There is a 10 gig fiber connect between these. So this is statically set to 192.168.10 with no gateway because this is set up to be a direct connect between uh, the server running Zen, the latest version, and the FreeNAS. So these are 10 gigabit in between, so we don't have IO bottlenecks in terms of networking when we're presenting this. So let's go back over here to look at the Zen server. We have uh, Debian on SCSI and Debian on FNS. NFS. We look at the host storage. I just kept them really simple. Uh, this one's called SCSI. This one's called NFS. One's mounted NFS. One's mounted VI SCSI. So really straightforward here. Um, and they're, like I said, they're mounted at 10 gigabit between them. This is the storage network, 192.168.10.5, just so you kind of get an idea. We are using Jumbo uh, frames, which is setting the frame ring at 9,000. This is a direct connect with no switch in between. It doesn't seem to have any problems. So I've done everything I can to optimize the performance between my head end unit of running XCPNG server and the free NAS box and try to limit any type of IO bottlenecks. So they're on equal platform. Both of them are mapped over this, both the NFS mount and the iSCSI mount are mount across this 10 gig link. So that is an important distinction, uh, just so we're all on the same page on these. And lastly, I'm using the Foronix test suite, the open source test suite for benchmarking. So this is what we'll be using to benchmark this. So all the results are completely reproducible by you. This is a free download if you wanted to use it. 
All right. And then we have here net data, which is built into uh, FreeNAS since 11.1. .1. It's a great visual way, and it's really a pretty way to look at all the results kind of in real time. So we're looking at some of the uh, services running on this and what it looks like from a performance standpoint. And we'll also be looking at some of the ZFS backend on here. All right, let's get started on the testing. That's where the fun part is. All right, I have this one called SCSI on Debian, NFS Debian. I made the naming as clear as possible. So tests on this one, of course, are on the SCSI one. Tests on the other one are on the NFS one. Um, other thing to note, because someone always asks, hey, Tom, how'd you get your shell to look like that? Uh, there'll be a link below to my GitHub where you can get the shell to look just like this, the parameters I have put in here for the shell. They're free. Okay, let's go ahead and run the test. So it's the 4 x test suite benchmark. And I had to spell benchmark properly. There we go. We'll go ahead and test all options. Four. So we're going to test four kilobyte, 64 kilobyte, and one meg. We'll test with a 512 megabyte test file. If I had time, I'd do all of them. If there's interest, maybe I'll run more tests later that are more extensive. And then we're going to choose three test all options. We'll save the results because I'll leave links so you can view these results and stare at them in detail if that pleases you. And we're going to give it this name here. As you can tell, I've been doing some of the tests. I always test things before I do the videos to make sure that they're, we get the idea of how it's going. So we're going to go ahead and do this as the test. This is just iSCSI. All at default, so I guess I could put default. So no optimization in here. We'll leave that as the same, and we'll go ahead and let this run. Now, while it's running, a couple things will pull up. Is we'll look at how the writes are actually being written to the drive. So I just, uh, for those you didn't see, zpool iostat dash minus v one was in refresh every one second. And what this is show you real quick is. Um, the data being written, if there is any, to the log file, which there's none because it's doing the read test, if I had to guess right now. Yep, still running the read test. So there's not going to be a lot written to the ZIL because it's not a write test. We're going to see this flip around when it comes to writing. Uh, you'll see a lot more in there. Now, while this is running over here, so let me move it over here, let it do its magic, and we can see right away, here's the CPU usage. So you can see this spikes in CPU usage when we're doing this. Now we've jumped up to the right performance testing. So the same thing kind of peaks between each one of them while it writes out the files. Now this is also when we go over here. There's still not too much going on in the ZIL. And it's part of the way, and I don't have the best not working knowledge of exactly how the protocol is written, uh, but it can it's the way it synchronizes the writes with iSCSI. It doesn't seem to be a ZIL intensive. So when we do these tests, we're going to do the test because NFS is uh, ZIL intensive on a ZFS file system. We'll do the testing on that and it does make a performance difference, but we're not going to bother testing the iSCSI again with and without the ZIL because it really doesn't seem to make much of a difference on there, at least from the testing I've done. I'm also always open to doing these tests over again if someone tells me I did something wrong or has a, a twist on it that I completely missed or some optimization setting. Uh, so please let me know in the comments below. I do read all the comments um, so I can learn more and we can all learn more together because I like doing follow-up videos on this. Okay, it is done. Let's go ahead and save the testing results. So yes. Yes, upload it all. You can have all the logs and everything on there. And this, this link, you don't have to try and copy it. I will paste it below as well. So this is where the results page will end up. So from a reading standpoint, until the files ex start exhausting the cache from a read standpoint, you get some really crazy high reads that are really, really fast, especially with the small file sizes. And then the writes are a little bit more sane when you do the write performance testing 512, so about 409 here. So, okay, this is the base test for this one here. 
Let's go ahead and move over to the NFS world. So we ran this right here. So that's the test that was run. Copy. Paste. We're going to do four, just like we did last time. Test all options. One, five, twelve. So, and then three. Test all options. Yes. We give the same results file name. NFS. Default options. All right. It's going to take a little longer to run. And you're going to notice right away that's because it just doesn't have the read-write performance. So let's look at what it's doing, though. So we look over here while these tests are running. So we see our CPU is peaking up here in the 26, 20, 29% of CPU, 13% of CPU. So it's just not hitting the CPU as hard. Look over here at the ZFS. Whoops. ZFS system. Here was those tests run over here. So ZFS reads versus just not peaking as much when you're over here. You're not getting the thoroughput that you were getting with there. I try to say that word right. Someone said I said it wrong. I don't want to say things wrong, but that does happen. Thoroughput, through, through, throughput, throughput, I think is, as you can tell, I read, if you didn't know, I read more than I talk, although I do talk a lot in videos. ZFS um, IOPS. So we seem to actually have more IOPS here. All right, let's look at the results. So we have really good so far read results. So we're up here at uh, 5,950, which obviously we'll compare more, but we're, we're looking up here at 6047 and 3622, so still a lot higher, but not substantially. But when we get to the right test, that's where you're really gonna see the differences because of the way the synchronization is from reading and writing with NFS being a lot different. We're gonna show the optimizations next on how to change that. So let's go back up here to the top. So here's where the read test, now we're into the right testing, and we're using even less CPU. Now what's happening here too, let's look over here now, Please note the log file, which was barely in use before, is really being used quite a bit. So we constantly have all this data flushing in and out of the log, um, the Zill system, because that's NFS is very dependent on it. And that's why we have this in here. And trust me, when we remove the Zill, the performance just goes down to nothing when you're doing it, especially when you're doing write testing. It just, it goes away. So Zill is an important aspect of this. So let's see how the tests are going. Almost done. Oh, still got, I thought almost done. It's got a few more to go. It does take that much longer um, compared to that. So the, the IO performance, you can already probably surmise where we're going with this. Um, I'm gonna fast forward for a second here, but you can tell that we're just not seeing the same IO performance. All right, and our testing is complete, and it's sad at 37 megs. Uh, so yes, we're going to save the results. All right, and let's look at them real quick here. Copy link. NFS default options. So... Yeah, they're bad. So we're sitting here looking at 37 versus, let's scroll down the bottom of this one here, 400 megs, 37 megs. Okay, so obviously these are uh, really bad. <laughs> and let's talk about why they're really bad and what can be done about this. So NFS, because of the syncing issue on writes, ZFS tries to sync every single write. So how do you get around that? Well, the solution is not amazing, but it is kind of a workaround. So let's talk about what that is. So we're going to go here and uh, close this. And we're going to go ahead and set. 
So it is, we're going to set the syncing to be off. Now, corruption and missing data are two different things. So you may see people say, don't set syncing off because you have the potential to uh, lose data. But ZFS is a copy on write file system. So that means it never puts another piece of data on there until their copy is made. So you can't end up with corrupted data, but you will lose data in flight. So data loss is definitely a potential with this. So by not committing the sinks in the same way, and you had a power loss, you could potentially lose some of that data in flight more so than if the syncing was enabled. So right now syncing is enabled and we're gonna go ahead and set it to off. It's pretty easy to do. ZFS set sync equals disabled tank slash the NF, oops, had it right first time, the NFS. That turns off the syncing. Now, you don't need to redo anything. Matter of fact, the VMs are still running. Uh, you can do this while the VMs are running. And we're going to run the same exact test again with syncing turned off. So the first one's run at default. Now we'll run the same test again, but syncing's turned off. So it's going to go way faster. So option four, one, three, yes. NFS with Z FS sync off. Uh, disabled is actually correct term, so we'll call it disabled. Build. Everything else can stay the same, and we'll just go ahead and run the test again. Now, we'll go here and look at the IO stat, and it, we don't see it, well, we gotta get to the right test and we'll see if it hammers the Zill port partition as much. That went fast. We're still in the read performance because the syncing is a write problem, not a read problem. All right. So we're not committing all these in the same interval, so we're not seeing as much uh, high usage we did before of the uh, log, let the benchmark keep running. Benchmark's already running way faster. And we're seeing higher CPU usage because of higher throughput of it. So we do see right away some results. And did it finish running? Oh, it's still running a couple more. Still running some more tests but they're going so much faster. You can already start seeing these high results on this. So we're on to the last test now. All right, testing's done. We'll go ahead and save the results. Yes, yes, yes. Copy link. And here's the results. NFS default options. NFS with ZFS sync disabled. So when it comes to the read performance right here, not a big difference. Write performance, it's like two completely different systems here. So we're getting up here about 360, 375. Read performance again, and final write performance on here. So dramatically, all we did was NFS was sync disabled to be able to do that. Now let's go over here and compare it to we're still not seeing the same performance. We're at 400 here, 400 on our writes, 414, versus the best rate we got was 384 here. Yeah, 375, 361. The write performance just isn't the same between us. So it's really close. So we are, we are approaching close on here. Now the last test I'm going to do uh, related to this is still on the NFS side. Like I said, we've just left iSCSI at all the defaults and not seen a big variation. So we're going to go over here to our free NAS box, go over to the pools, storage, pools, status. And one of the magical things with ZFS is let's go ahead and make the Zill go away. And by the way, you can do this without rebooting the VMs. I'm leaving them running um, and without rebooting the servers or anything. So if you want to add or remove a log or a cache, you can just go here and remove or replace it if one's going bad. 
It's part of the beauty of systems. You don't have to take them down because taking systems down is, well, that's not fun. All right, we no longer have a log. So if we go over here, Z pool IO stat, there's just the tank raid Z1. There's no more log um, on there. Oop, I'll go ahead and leave it running. The VM is still running, so we're gonna just run this test again. The only thing we have, we still have sync disabled, but we're also no Zill drive on this right now. So four, one, three, yes. This is NFS sync and no zill. All right, and we'll let this test run now and see what the differences are without the SSD zill drive in the mix. Okay, test completed. Yes, yes, yes. And not having a Zill, not much of a difference I see here about the write, uh, reading performance. But writing performance, puzzling me, because everything I read says definitely have a Zill, went up a little bit. So I found that actually kind of puzzling here. So NFC uh, no Zill. So we're seeing a little bit of a performance bump in there. So we're actually now uh, just about on par with our uh, iSCSI implementation. So it's really close here. So now that we have the iSCSI, maybe this is a problem with my Zill drive that I'm using. And it, this is all in the same array. So now we're gonna run the iSCSI one again. We're not changing the sync option. The only thing different between us is that we remove the Zill drive from it. So this is the final re test one we're gonna do here. So we'll go ahead and, and do a test all options. One, three, Yes. No Zill drive, just to see if uh, maybe there's something up on my system. See if it makes any difference to the ice because yet the Zill is missing. All right, results are done. Let's save them. and see the comparison. So reads the same, writes the same. iSCSI seems not to care if there's a Zill. We have a, actually the slightest drop, but I'm gonna call that enough with some deviation because we're seeing if I run these results, a couple percent deviation and it's noted in the benchmark that sometimes it does that. But we do see an interesting uh, result difference with the Zill there or not there when it comes to the testing with NFS. So I find it kind of interesting. We do seem to get a little bit of performance. This goes against my understanding of having a Zill on there, but this is done with ZFS having the syncing disabled because NFS and ZFS fight with each other when it comes to sync syncing. Now, like I said, there is some data risks that come with this as in terms of you lose data in flight that's uncommitted because it's asynchronous. That's a deciding factor up to you. It's not the same as data corruption, but it is a result that you will have to contend with if there's a problem. Um, and I don't have an enterprise Zill to test uh, if that would make a difference, you know, Intel Optane's and some of the other Zeus Cache and a few other companies make devices that are designed exclusively for this for really high end. But this has been my results for NFS versus iSCSI. I'm still leaning towards, and this is why we provision iSCSI. It performs consistently better. I do know that the thin provisioning thing is a big deal to some people, and I can very briefly touch on that because that'll be the final little thing because it's well, the other deciding factors, but you can't thin provision. Um, it's interesting because, and we'll show this here, let me pull up the ZFS information. So if we go here and uh, just so you know the command, ZFS get all for the tank, uh, the NFS, and we look through here, used available for compression ratio, 4.5X. So I'm showing this because these are the same VMs 
uh, copy down here. So we see that ZFS is able to very much compress this because, well, there's a lot of just dead space inside of here. So you have first thin provisioning handled by the hypervisor, and then you also have the um, compression on ZFS. So you can get some storage savings, which of course can translate into performance and storage savings. So used by data set is only 2.32 gigs. Now, Z uh, Zen server does not support thin provisioning over iSCSI. So we're going to get all tank and SCSI, and we see something different. We see the same high compression ratio that we had on the other one, so we're definitely compressing a lot of it. Um, and the same thing, it's you're not using as much data on here. So when you look at the uh, compressed used by data set factor, so we'll do this one right here. Matter of fact, let's just do this. We are seeing that SCSI uses just a little bit more versus here about the way it provisions inside of the data set. Now, you got to remember Z, the way ZFS works because it's providing the iSCSI targets as a ZVAL block storage versus a NFS, which is file level storage. So it's going to have a different understanding because you're looking at files. So if we do an ls slash uh, mount tanks NFS, whoops. So we can see the VHD file here and what it thinks it's provisioned is 11 gigs, even though we've seen it's only using 2.32 because of the compression and what's actually in there. So it gets kind of interesting. Now, the last thing we'll cover on this uh, directly related is let's duplicate a few things. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll stop each of these. So stop, stop, and we're stopping them so we can fast clone them. So we'll go ahead and fast clone. Let's make one, two, So now we should have a couple of them. So we've got a couple of these. And let's go ahead and uh, fire these up. Whoops. So they've actually done something. Yep, start these three VMs. And we're going to go over here and we'll clone a couple of these. All right, so now we're st spinning up all these uh, ones here, so they're all booting and doing something. And when we look at the storage, here's those drives, not thin provisioned, so there's no uh, compression or anything on there. And we're going to go ahead and look at the storage, look at the NFS ones. And because it's thin provisioning with a base copy, and then showing this here. So it's a little bit, works a little bit different, but when you look at the disks, here's all the different disks, but they're all forked off each other. But let's talk about what happens behind the scenes inside of ZFS while these are all running. So here's all of them. There's one, two, three here. Well, you know, we need to clone one more. So let's go ahead and uh, stop and start and clone. There we go. Now we have the equal number of them all the way around, all booted up and running. Look at the storage. Okay, everything's up and running. Look at the stats. Yep, we pinned the CPU, <laughs> spinning up all those VMs. And it seems to clone the same when you're doing this. Uh, I Maybe slightly faster on NFS, I'm not sure. But let's take a look at what's going on behind the scenes now. Here's all those VHDs. And it's only tracking the differentials between them. So whenever you do either a clone or create a snapshot, um, you have your base, which is this one here, and then we have all these individual ones here, which is only the differential between the other ones, hence the thin provisioning. Uh, so they're not taken up, even though each of these hard drives are potentially 16 gig, they're not really taking up much space on the actual hard drive. So get by use by data sets, we still we're up here, we were at uh, 2.32, we're barely using any more as we got, what, 50, 100, 200 more megs of spinning those up. But that's also the same here, used by data set, 3.09 gigs. So 
if I spun them all up and it's not thin provisioning, but it's still only using all of that. Well, that comes back to this all, whoops. And it's the compression ratios. So we keep getting more and more compression going because it's really just seeing a bunch of duplications. So you're still getting a lot of efficiencies because ZFS looks at it and goes, this is all a bunch of duplicates. But Zen Server, because it doesn't support thin provisioning, isn't seeing it that way. So it's going to report differently. So just take for this knowledge what you will. I just wanted to show how that works. So we are going to run out of space quickly here because we have you know, the base copies and each one not thin provisioned all the way out here. But when ZFS handles it on the back end, we get these really high compression ratios. Um, and so it still works. You still have a lot of efficiencies. And uh, yeah, it's kind of novel. I just wanted to point that out for those of you that say, but I need the thin provisioning. Maybe you do. And maybe that's a reason you absolutely want to do this with uh, NFS. So it's our compression ratio here. We actually have um, worse compression now. So I think, let me make sure I got look at the right numbers here. Okay, let's just get the compression ratio and compare them. That one's at that, and then SCSI is at 52x. Interestingly, it's compressing SCSI more. So um, I don't know why. I mean, like I said, these are the same VM. We duplicated the same number of VMs, uh, and we are some reason seeing there. So these are some of the underlying things. I don't have a ton of answers, but I'm sure someone a lot smarter than me maybe has a link to a great article that can uh, tell me some of the other things I may have missed or if there's other things um, that I did completely wrong. But I will leave a link to the test results just so they're all laid out here for you and how the system is set up. And like I said, I covered all that. But if there's something I missed, that will be a part two of this video. If there's something blatant that I just set up wrong and you're like, and you find a reason that NFS should perform substantially better than um, iSCSI provisioning um, because I didn't do a setting, let me know and I will make a follow-up video to this. Um, thanks. And hopefully this was insightful. I know I did some learning today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.